more and more and for younger kids i would say you know build up a quality portfolio so that you can become as magnetic and sticky as possible. Magnetic meaning people are drawn to you through your personality and through your work, but then sticky in terms of loyalty and people aren't gonna shop around because hey, I'll pay a couple bucks more, but I like his work. That's right. There's it's a, not worth it to me to keep shopping, yeah. you know? There's a business plan for you. Magnetic and sticky. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be drawn to it and then you gotta stay with it. That's I like right. it. I like it. Uh, that might be the name of the episode. Uh-oh. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome back to the Same Business, Different Day podcast. Uh, my name is Zeke Corley and first I want to introduce my co-host, Alyssa Lee Good. How are you doing today? I'm fantastic today, Zeke. That's great to hear <laughs> and I'm glad that you made the trip down. I, yes. I mean, this is going to be a good time and, and we've yes. got a great guest here. Now, what I wanted to say though, very often nowadays, the word pivot is used to describe those that have to make adjustments as a result of the COVID pandemic. In business, the definition of a word pivot is to fundamentally change the direction of a business. The main goal of a pivot is to help a company improve revenue or survive in the market. But the way you pivot your business can make all of the difference. But some of today's business owners got to where they are today because of pre-pandemic pivots. For example, a move from the corporate world to self-employment. Today's guest is just that type of story and a great example for our listeners looking to do the same. Ladies and gentlemen of the Same Business Different Day podcast, let's welcome Chris Ryan to the show. Welcome, welcome. Hey, (laughs) thank you very much. Down in front. (laughs) I'm glad to see you, Chris. I'm glad that you're here, man. Uh, Alyssa, you want to tell us the rules of the game? Yes. Rules of the game. So on Same Business, Different Day, we're here to talk about what you, Chris, do professionally. Mm -hmm. But before we get there, we want to get to know you personally. Mm -hmm. So we're going to learn a little bit about the tools that you've equipped to become who you are today. And then when it feels right, we'll reveal what you actually do. Awesome. You know, a a lot of times uh, for the youth, right, we see young kids around, you know, our kids or, you know, nephews or whatever. We we ask them what they want to be when they grow up, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of us forget that as we move on in life, what we want it to be before we, do you remember what you wanted to be when you grew up? Oh man, I'm not gonna have a typical story on that. Uh, Even better. I, I, I think my first heroes were musicians. So I, like my earliest uh, dreams were holding a tennis racket and playing air guitar and play, okay. pretending and I'm on stage. So, you know, I, in terms of profession, even growing up, uh, like grade school, I was not, I was not clear on that. Mm-hmm. And, and that was a great source of concern and confusion for me as a youngster. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I was always a, um, I was a student of the movies and the arts. I loved going to the movies. I loved seeing some of the different types of directors and how they were doing, like Martin, Martin Scorsese and Francis sure. Ford Coppola. Yeah. And uh, I can even remember eighth grade going to the career guidance counselor. And they had this funky little primitive computer thing where you would plug in, what do you like and what are you good at? And then it would come through some kind of a algorithm to tell you okay, here's the things <laughs> okay. you should think mm-hmm. about okay. when yeah. it comes to college <clears throat> and the top the thing that came up on top for me uh incredibly enough was a uh, film editor oh and i have always been a geek of film editing you know okay. Okay? i don't know if you're familiar like martin scorsese a lot of times in his movies he'll have a particular sequence that is the scorsese edit sure sequence, sure sure where it's really artistic and mm-hmm. there's no dialogue mm-hmm. it's it's all just you know, this almost uh, percussive. It's his signature, his ed- imprint. Editing. Mm-hmm. And I loved it. Mm-hmm. I love that. So anyway, um, music was really the only thing I cared about when I was a kid growing up. Mm. I'm more, I'm interested in knowing about your, and, and music, we, we, we share this same passion, but what about that confusion and concern? Why, why such confusion and concern? And do you feel, how do you feel about the youth now who may still have that as well, not knowing exactly what direction that they want to go. Should they be so concerned or can they find peace in that? 
Uh, well, it's hard to find peace in uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when you're a kid, either you don't really care and you're just kind of like entitled and my parents got money and I'm going to be fine. Just living a life. I'm just going to, yeah, play sports and have fun. And mm -hmm. it just always comes to me. Mm -hmm. It's always easy. For mm -hmm. some kids, it's that way. Uh, I didn't really have a model growing up with uh, parents who had a lot of business success. My dad moved around a lot, di different things. And so we, we actually, we didn't grow up poor, but we didn't grow up secure. Mm -hmm. We grew up struggling. Okay. Uh, and so, um, yeah, I think you... You know, I, I was a kid growing up being, uh, I, I, I called myself a worrier, which I have now since retrained myself because that is not a good thing to identify with. Mm -hmm. But at the time it was kind of like, I don't know how they do it. These grownups, I don't know how they pay for the house. Oh. I don't understand this whole thing with cars and insurance and sure. paychecks. You know, I mean, this is when I'm junior high, high school. Yeah. Uh, and I'm still living at home. And, and so it isn't until you get out there and you finally like, okay, I'm going to move out of my parents' house and I'm going to pay a little bit of rent mm -hmm. and I'm going to figure out how to pay some bills. And mm -hmm. eventually you uh, end up getting a credit card. And so you get this thing called credit. And I didn't get any of that. So uh, it was a little overwhelming when I was th a kid thinking about it. So I just tried to stop thinking about it so much and just kind of like do the next logical thing, whatever the next thing in front of me was mm -hmm. until I figured it out. And mm -hmm. that took me through my entire career. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, it sounds like you really were, I, I, I mean, it. you weren't on your own, were you? I mean, uh, you said there weren't a lot of mentors. Um, obviously, you, your dad was working hard. Um, what, how do you figure something like, how do you navigate life in, in these type of, in that type of a, an environment? Yeah. Uh, good question. Well, you know, uh, you just, it's like I said, you take the next indicated step and then you take a, a step of faith and you do that until the next door opens. Mm -hmm. And so for me, you know, after mm -hmm. high school, you know, and I spent a lot of time in kitchens and I learned how to cook and. You know, up until about the time I was 20 or 21, I was working in kitchens all the time, back mm. of the house. So mm. I learned, you know, how to speak Spanish because <laughs> mm. everybody in the back of the house speaks Spanish. Sure, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's where I learned yeah. Spanish first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I know all the bad words and all the food <laughs> words and all the commands of right. bring me this, please yeah. do that. Cut this faster. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but then, um, so at the same time, I was really fascinated with radio and music and I started hanging out with uh, like going to concerts and, and, and really focused on like listening to radio, listening to DJs, listening to how they did it, how they talked. And I signed up actually uh, to go to the Columbia School of Broadcasting. Mm -hmm. And this was back when I was about 19. And uh, so it was, you know, shortly out of high school and, uh, before that, actually, my, my first career path was going to be being a nurse. And I actually took hmm. courses for it. I was accepted at Mesa College. Everything up until the point where they said, okay, now you go to buy the books and buy the uniforms. And I was, you know, not, I didn't have any money. My parents hadn't saved money for education. I didn't want to take out loans. I didn't know how that worked. So I just went, all right, well, I'll just uh, keep working in restaurants for a while. But maybe I'll try, you know, this Columbia School of Broadcasting thing, see if I can get a job. I thought that was the way you get into radio. Yeah. Mm. And uh, so I was working at a restaurant down in Pacific Beach. And in the restaurant comes in Jesse Bullet, who was one of the big afternoon DJs at KPRI here in San Diego, a rock station, really good rock station at the time. And I recognized him. And I, it just was like this really, you know, I think life is this way if you pay attention. Um, I was about to take this career step. Jesse Bullet, a DJ, is in there. I come up, introduce myself, tell him what I'm about to do. And he said, don't do that. Just come down to the station. I want to introduce you to somebody. And mm -hmm. he introduced me to a uh, pro, uh, promotions director. And so I started being an intern and going to concerts and getting backstage. And it was like, oh, man, this Isn't is that starting best? to be good. Mm -hmm. It's okay. the best. I remember hanging out with some of the record people at a 
one of, I won't I won't divulge the name, but she was a radio star here, and she ended up being a TV star elsewhere. But we were sitting in this jacuzzi in her backyard, and people didn't have clothes on, and mm-hmm. it was like, wow, this is just Set like apart. the life. You, you were living a rock and roll life. <laughs> yeah. That's was, awesome. Yeah. Was the restaurant your first job? The first, yeah. I would say so. I mean, my very first job was knocking on doors. My, my very, very, I wasn't even 16. I had to get a special permit because I was underage. But I was knocking on doors trying to sign up uh, sales calls for Lennox Air Conditioning. Okay. So it was nothing but, well, me and my buddies in a van getting, we didn't have driver's licenses. Mm-hmm. So we would all get driven into Escondido, drop us off. They'd tell us which streets to go to and we'd come back and we'd, compete for how many leads we could get yeah but it was you know five bucks an hour yeah that was pretty good sure. back in the day mm-hmm. uh it's it's actually you know still not bad when you consider some some of the uh the tip wages that people get but sure. anyway uh i thought i was in hog heaven but i i, I didn't like uh i didn't like the sales part of it i didn't like the rejection part it teaches you a lot though. Mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah, but the but the restaurant thing was really fun because it's a family, mm-hmm. and uh, you get to know the waitresses, you get to know all the buddies in the kitchen, you get to know the bartender, wink, yes, wink, yes, 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 <laughs> and uh, and so I liked it. I really like restaurants. Okay, that, that would have been my first kind of like career, unofficially. Okay, back to radio though. Yeah. Isn't that, wasn't that so much fun? I mean, you know, because I I worked radio as well, and we we've had these kind of conversations, but. Um, we, you know, you got to go to so many shows. You know, I, I'd seen so many shows by the time I was, what, 21 years old. If I never go to a concert now, I'd, I'd be fine. I got to work for record labels. I got to, you know, just be completely involved. And then I also learned a lot of sales there, too. I learned about calling the mom and pop stores. I learned about what consignment is. I, you know, you... you and then you learn the marketing side of things, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the white label records. And, and you, of course, you know, I'm obviously aging myself, but there was vinyl back in the day, guys. <laughs> we used to have to put it down. And if it's scratched, we'd have to you know, throw it away and get another one. You know? So you know the term Q-burn. Ignoring squills and warning lights on your car is not a good way to lower the cost of owning it. And going without essential business insurance is not a good way to save money in your business. What we know for sure is doing either will cost you more than you will save, in the short and the long run. With YourInsurancePlace.com, you can trust the specialists to help maintain your cars and avoid major expenses. Business owners should look to business insurance specialists when it comes to finding competitively priced quality insurance coverage for their businesses. At YourInsurancePlace.com, we specialize in workers' compensation, general and professional liability, employment practices and cyber liability, property owner policies, and bonds for most types of businesses. Yourinsuranceplace.com knows that we can help. If you're uncovered, need to lower the cost of your current insurance, or need better coverage, we can help. Yourinsuranceplace.com has been helping businesses for close to 40 years. If you need a quote on your insurance, call us now at 858-569-8100 or find us at yourinsuranceplace.com. We are business insurance specialists ready to help. Vista Chamber of Commerce is a proud supporter of the Same Business Different Day podcast. We support our business members with promotion and marketing, business referrals, educational opportunities, workforce development, and advocacy. Check us out online at vistachamber.org. So you know the term... Q-burn. Right, 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 See, right. The kids today, they would not know <laughs> I have what no is idea. a Q-burn. I have Any no idea, idea what that means. No. I play vinyl, though. So, mm. Well, when you drop a needle on a record enough times, uh-huh. and bef- when you put a vinyl on a turntable mm-hmm. on, in radio, you put the needle on, you advance the record until you hear the first beat, uh-huh. mm-hmm. then you pull the record back a half turn. Mm-hmm. Okay. You do that enough times, and the needle starts to create a what's called a Q-burn, which is this little... <laughs> Right before the record starts. And it was so bad on, mm-hmm. on like, uh, <laughs> Stairway to Heaven, which begins really soft. Oh, sure. Yeah. And then there's yeah. just this loud noise. Right before. <laughs> we were always, uh, you know, ordering new copies. Yeah. Certain 
Entrepreneurial focus, though, at, at, at some mm-hmm. point, um, did you get into your own or did you find your way into a career before you started your own business or th- started thinking of starting your own businesses? No, I, didn't, I never had a dream of starting my own business. Really. Right, right. So tell us about the career path. Uh, well, so I was in restaurants and I was also moonlighting as a Midnight to 3 a.m. DJ at UCSD's Mm -hmm. uh, radio station, okay, which is KSDT. I don't even know if they're still licensed. I think they're talk now, but back then it was completely free form, uh, heavy emphasis on progressive jazz, jazz rock, Mm -hmm. you know, non commercial records, which was like, you know, perfect heaven for me. Yeah. I could go in there and I could play Pat Metheny and Chick Corea yeah. and all kinds of stuff. So mm-hmm. I did that uh, for two years. We caught that underground radio when, yeah, when we exactly. were in, uh, around. Exactly. Yeah. Frank Zappa, all kinds of mm-hmm. stuff. So after a couple of years, I'd done enough auditions to where I had a little cassette. Well, it was actually a little tiny reel-to-reel tape. And it was my demo tape of mm-hmm. me, me talking. Okay. And I packed up my Volkswagen Bug. And I... <laughs> had a bunch of camping equipment and a couple hundred dollars and I just drove east. And my goal was to start in Arizona and go north until I hit the border and then come down the other side of the Rockies. Mm. And I was just going to apply at radio stations with my demo tapes. I had a little bag of reel-to-reel tapes and resumes. And I was just going to, because you can't get a start. It's hard to get a start in San Diego. You You have to really... You know, it's a big market. It's very mm-hmm. competitive. It doesn't pay well unless you're a big morning show. Yeah, none of them pay well. So uh, my first stop was Tucson, Arizona. First radio station I went into, or maybe the second one, had just been nominated uh, one of the top 10 radio stations of the country at Rolling Stone Magazine. Mm-hmm. It was the only radio station west of the Mississippi. And it was done on a per capita basis, which means, you know, okay, it's a small town, but they still have a chance because based on how many votes they got and how small the town was, oh, it was really popular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this was a freeform radio station, but it was commercial. It was just owned by, you know, a mom and pop, which back in the day, that's the way it was. Now it's all owned by big companies. So um, that was kind of like an entrepreneurial move, I guess, Mm -hmm. because I... I packed up my car. That's I was driving ambitious. with no no sense of where I was going to end up. I was mm-hmm. just going to drive until I got a job. Right. And I uh, I got an offer at the station, KWFM. Liked them a lot. You know, they're playing all kinds of music. Everything from the Allman Brothers to Frank Zappa to, you know, Pat Metheny. I mean, it was, it was across the board. Mm-hmm. And then stuff that I'd never even heard of. But I I, uh, I got an offer to work part-time there. I thought, well, you know, I'm going to drive up to Phoenix and see what I've got there. And I went up to Phoenix, and it was like, oh, I didn't even like the place. It was flat and hot. Mm-hmm. Tucson, at least it was mountainous and a little cooler, a little greener. And so I went up to Flagstaff, applied. <laughs> and uh, by the time I got up to the Utah border, I was camping at Lake Powell. I got a call. And the uh, program director in, in Tucson said, hey, we got some changes going on down here. We'd like like to make you an offer but it's probably going to be overnights you know so i i accepted and i moved i didn't know a single person in tucson yeah <laughs> but uh all i knew is i was in radio and i was going to do that until i figured out what my real job was going to be mm. yeah and that was like 20 years of my life wow now you mentioned though just digging into the radio a little bit obviously just because i i know a little bit about the field you mentioned what they were playing would mm-hmm. that have paid a, would that have been a factor in oh, you taking the job oh, yeah. really Absolutely. because that's you know that isn't that important it's an important lesson to to know for the young entrepreneurs that might be listening right you're, you're going out you're getting started you've got ideas about what you want to do in the future but there's somebody offering you a job but they're not offering you a job with the exact they, may, they might even have the pay but not the terms that you thought. Mm-hmm. I got to play something different than what I expected to. I have to actually wash dishes, not just serve the tables. Mm-hmm. I, You know, sometimes you have to compromise a little bit, but you're saying I, the the music that they were playing, the playlist, the music programming. That was part of my paycheck. It was part of it for you. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. I loved it. And uh, it was 
it was free. It was creative. I could mm -hmm. express myself yeah. and I could learn about new music. I could truly get behind what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Plus it was a popular station. So if you were working there, you were a star, okay. you know? Uh -huh. So as a young single kid moving yeah. into a town, not knowing anybody, Prince of Tucson. If if they well, eventually. I mean, <laughs> I, I was there seven years. So by the time I left there, uh, I had developed a you know kind of a reputation yeah. of following. Right. I had a weekly jazz show, which was the only one in uh, in town. It was the only five hour block of jazz, and I was up against <laughs> Wolfman Jack. Was on at the same time in Tijuana. All right. And his signal went all the way you yeah. know, through Arizona. But uh, I, I always thought it was kind of cool that in the ratings, I beat Wolfman Jack. Yeah. That is cool. <laughs> you got to save that stuff. You got to publicize that, man. Yeah. That's very cool. But uh, what you said is true, is when you're young, you have to think, I want to do something that I love. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take a job that I hate just because it pays the bills. Because you're not going to... You're not going to be successful in a job like that. That's an important lesson. It, it's more important to get a, a job that is makes you feel good, makes you feel worthy and worthwhile, and that you can invest yourself in beyond just payday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if you hate your job, it's just, it's always going to just be a job. And it takes a toll on so many things. Oh, yeah. Especially your mental it health. You talked you about being a warrior earlier. Yeah. It, you, you, that's the last thing you need is to be in a job or in a position where, you know, you hate it every night. Yeah. That's why restaurants was actually my favorite job. I've said it numerous mm -hmm. times on this podcast mm -hmm. um, because there is no stress. You don't go home thinking about your clients. You got cash in your pocket from the work that you've done. That's right. And you don't have to think about the clientele. Right. Um, so um, and you get to meet new people every day. Some people like that. Some people don't. Mm -hmm. But know what you like. Know what mm -hmm. you enjoy. Yep. You know. Yep. So, so what was next after radio? So I moved from Tucson to San Diego and got into radio here, which was kind of like making the big time. Right. Uh, because Great. Because I was back home. This is my mm -hmm. hometown. And you had a resume to come and with. And I had a resume, and I thought, okay, as soon as I click on the microphone, all my best friends are going to call me and say, "Where you been?" Yeah, you're the guy that beats Wolfman Jack. <laughs> they weren't. <laughs> lis they weren't listening. Oh no. Well, I mean, I was at a little station in Oceanside, uh, Magic 102, so it didn't have a big signal. Uh, so everybody in North County could hear the station, and it was also, you know, it was a cool station, classic rock. So I was back home and I was making decent money. Uh, eventually, the music got like once once I went to concerts like Guns N' Roses and Metallica and kids started calling me sir. Mm. And I could tell that the generation was kind of changing. I was a little uh, aging out, perhaps. Mm. Mm. And then it got into the hair metal of the 80s and all, you know, all the hardcore bands that I... I there was still a lot of music out there that I loved, but it wasn't always the popular music. So I moved from being on air to being more of a promotions and marketing director. Okay. And I was still in radio, but I was doing marketing for stations here in San Diego, Q106. I was, you know, working with Jeff and Jer, uh, Dave Shelley and Chainsaw at Rock 105.3 back when they were on that station. And so um, that's where I learned about marketing. And uh, we worked on logo development, uh, I edited TV commercials, so that's where I got into learning more about actually doing the editing, the thing that my career counselor said I would be good at. Right. <laughs> and, um, and, and then deregulation happened. Reagan, Ronald Reagan signed this FCC deregulation <laughs> thing, which meant little companies could sell to big companies. And all of a sudden, you just had radio stations changing overnight because they were all getting bought Eating out. Up. Yeah. Mm. And then you'd have like, all the music would be the same and you'd have one program director in Denver that was taking care of the Western U S and it wasn't, it wasn't fun anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and they started paying people less, you know, they would, they would have like a lot of the DJs you hear on the radio. They're not even in San Diego, right? They're voice tracking it from Atlanta or whatever. And it's all being computer scripted in between computerized song playlists. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, it's not fun. So, right. I got laid off from radio mm -hmm. because I was making more than, you know, they didn't have they to pay somebody yeah. to do it. They could have mm -hmm. a promotions and marketing guy in, in uh, Seattle do my job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was scared. My, my wife was pregnant and, and uh, I had no job. I had a mortgage. 
And that was my first real, like, oh my God, come to Jesus. Yeah. Mm. But um, I peer, you know, pounded the pavement for about four months and uh, got a job with a marketing agency that did radio uh, commercials and marketing. You know, we were working out deals where we were uh, doing advertising for things like Barilla Pasta and Kraft Foods and Red Lobster. And so those are my clients. Okay. And I was uh, more of an ad agency guy at that time. So that's where I kind of went into my second career. How about networking? Um, I know you two sort of met through a networking situation. And I mean, I, I imagine in the marketing world, a, a lot of it is who you know, mm-hmm. only because as the person, if you're trying to make someone introductions, right? So it's if you're going to market, it's about getting the brand out there. Um, so at the beginning, you know, how did networking play into your story? Um, I think re- uh, networking is another word for relationships. Mm-hmm. And I think building relationships is valuable in anything you do, whether it's the relationship you have with your brothers and sisters or with your teachers or with your friends or your coworkers or your boss. It, you have, if, for to be successful, my opinion, I think you really do have to learn how to read people and how to be genuine to yourself, but at the same time communicate and get what you want. Mm -hmm. So there's a negotiation with that. And networking is just all about building a wider net of relationships. And that's how actually I got the job after I got out of radio. Uh, It was because of a relationship I had with another programming uh, program director at KGB. He said, hey, I, I know somebody who's looking to hire you know, you might want to give them a call. Mm-hmm. So if it weren't for marketing or networking, you know, that, that's the key <laughs> yeah. to opening that's up doors. Right. Another very you know, important You know, people lesson. aren't going to just come find you. You have to be in motion and right. in life. You have to be out there and, you know, have some inertia to make yeah. things happen. Yeah. yeah. I see networking just as an opportunity. You know, if nothing else, you'll make a friend. Mm-hmm. But you could make a business opportunity, someone that you just met at a restaurant. Mm-hmm. You chatted for a bit, exchanged numbers, and then from there, yeah. got a job. So, right. Right. <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time. I mean, even in relationships, uh, how'd you meet your boyfriend? Well, you know, my girlfriend uh, introduced me, and she knows my taste, and right. you know, yeah. it's all about relationships. Right. That's how I met my wife. You know, it was a blind date, but I trusted the person that set us up. There you go. And uh, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Let, good. Um, let's get to the reveal. Yeah, I think it's time. The modern world of business is a world of technology. If you're not adapting to the technological world, you're falling behind. Our guest today is a professional in the world of marketing techniques and corporate branding using media standards that not all of us have access to. Ryan Video Productions is all about helping businesses with social media, virtual events, testimonials, instructional videos, music videos, and more. If your business needs promoting in the virtual world, which it does, Chris Ryan is the man to make it happen. So welcome, Chris Ryan, to the show. (laughs) That's why you're here. (laughs) That was awesome. I'd love to record that and just run (laughs) that on my website. Send you the snippet. Yeah, yeah, you're good. You're good. That sounded great. Thank you. How'd you you find your way into uh, Ryan Video Productions? How'd you find your way into what you're doing now? Uh, so I was working at a ad agency in Cincinnati and, uh, you I was moved a vice around. president. Yeah. I, I, I and you lived, were willing to. Yeah. 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 I got to Cincinnati because, um, the agency that I was working for here in San Diego was headquartered in Cincinnati. Okay. And I was only going to, you know, it was a three person office. It was a satellite office. So I wasn't going to get very far in that office, but if I wanted to move up corporate wise, I'd have to move to Cincinnati. Well, and my wife, you, she was pregnant at the time, right? She, she had by that time had our, our son and, and uh, her family. She's from Indiana. So being in Cincinnati was only a couple she hours from that change. the family. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, well, Cincinnati, it's I can experience the Midwest. I can figure out how to shovel snow. <laughs> you know, I can see some green trees yeah. and changing colors. So sure. uh, I was in Cincinnati working for um, a uh, marketing agency, but. You know, I was already kind of capped out there on my salary. I was a VP. It was owned by a couple of guys, and there was nowhere to go, you know, a couple of partners. 
So the, you know, I didn't get a, a raise for like six years. So I finally went to the owner and I said, look, I know you, you can't maybe pay me more, but can I take some of my free time and start doing something on the side? Okay. Like a side hustle. Okay. And uh, he said, okay. And so I showed him, you know, a brochure that I'd made and I showed him a couple of videos that I'd done for friends. Uh, and he said, yeah, I'll support you in that if, if you just keep doing your job. So I, I did that for about a year and developed kind of a following or, you know, a portfolio here. But I was also for that company traveling all around the world doing video production for them. Okay. So like I've been, uh, how many countries, like 35 countries around wow. the world I've done video production. He allows you to use uh, his equipment to yep. do your work? Yep, their equipment, and uh, they edited, so I was the director. Uh, so that was the one thing that I didn't have the chops for when I, when I finally started my company. I had to really get serious about learning editing. But um, anyway, he said, "Yeah, that's fine. You can uh, do a side hustle. Just you know, keep doing your job." And I did that for about a year, and he kind of saw that I was spending more and more time doing this other job. That's how it worked. <laughs> and uh, when the economy turned down, you know, a little bit. They saw me as being expendable, so mm. he made a uh, uh, an offer of letting me go <laughs> and giving me a few months of, you know, advance notice. And uh, so, man, I, that's a, the second time in my life where oh, I was, I was scared because mm -hmm. it was like I was of an age where I wasn't going to knock on a door and get an entry level job. I was a vice president, and getting that kind of a job takes a lot of time got to be willing to move around mm -hmm. i was already settled i didn't yes. really want to move so i decided all right i'm just going to start focusing just on the video company and see the how pivot. i can make it happen <laughs> mm -hmm. and i had you know no no regular clients no regular income mm -hmm. but i started networking as you're talking mm -hmm. about join the vista chamber join the carlsbad chamber going to all kinds of events, met you, Zeke. Yes, sir. You know, hung out with your dad doing, you know, canvassing. Mm -hmm. Shout out, Pops. Anything out, I Pops. could do to meet people and put my business card, you know, in front of them. Right. But again, it goes to relationships. If people believe in you and you have enthusiasm, then that's, you know, a door opener. And if you just are genuine and you have, I, I had built up a little bit of work so people could see what I could do. Mm -hmm. And uh, then... People started saying, okay, I'll give you a shot. You know, mm -hmm. I, I got a, you know, a few hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or whatever. I've got a little budget. Give me a shot uh, or give me a bit of video. So it just started growing, you know. You but found your way. Three years yeah. and it's paying the bills. Yeah, thank God. Yeah. Knocking on wood. <laughs> Congratulations, man. It, it's yeah, awesome. It's, and it's I, fun. I remember even the first time we met. So um, now why use a video to promote business i mean we i mean obviously besides the obvious answers why should somebody be trying to track down somebody like you for their own business north county daily star is the leading source for news and community information along the 78 corridor it's free to subscribe and it is updated daily look for us on your mobile device or computer at ncdailystar.com you need insurance and you need yourinsuranceplace.com as your brokers. And I'll tell you why. They have access to hundreds of carriers and were never left without results. Not even the hard to place risks. A good insurance broker is a problem solver. Our team is dedicated to getting you covered. Take time to shop with yourinsuranceplace.com. Save money. Get protected. Yourinsuranceplace.com Chimichurri Kitchen Company, how it all began. Grandma Guillermina Nina created this sauce in her own restaurant kitchen in 1967, Santa Fe, Argentina, and it instantly became a hit with patrons. They exclaimed how garlicky, tangy, and just plain delicious her version was, and luckily, it continues to be to this day. At our Chimichurri Kitchen Company, we continue in the legacy of creating sauces that only add immense flavor to any dish. The traditional classic chimichurri Nina created is made fresh with the finest ingredients, but only gets better with time as the flavors bolden on the shelf and your refrigerator. 
refrigerator. That is the true beauty of chimney sauce, our little nickname for it. Try the classic or any of our other varieties of chimneys created in our own chimichurri kitchen. Use it as a dip, cooking sauce, marinade, or steak sauce. It will add a pizzazz of flavor to just about any dish. This year, shop small and support local. Please visit our website, chimichurrikitchen.com, to purchase and change your culinary palate forever. You can also add us on Instagram and Facebook under Chimichurri Kitchen Company. Thank you so much for supporting local and small family-owned business. So, um, now why use a video to promote the business? I mean, we. I mean, obvious. Besides the obvious answers, why should somebody be trying to track down somebody like you for their own business? Because people watch video. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, because people now are learning differently than they used to. Because mm-hmm. everything is available to them online. Right. You search and Google will serve up video as the answer to your search. You used to search online and it was like a PDF of somebody's report or an right. essay or a newspaper article. Mm-hmm. But, you know, video is really important for businesses not only to be visible online because a lot of people are looking for things and will search. Video is a very compelling way to tell the story in a believable way because you can have your eyeball right there in the camera and the viewer gets a chance to see who you are, get a feel for your, your, your tone, your authenticity. Mm. And then the camera can go in and tell a story through the eyes of either your uh, customers or testimonials. So whatever you're doing in business, video is a way to open the door and let people see you virtually, especially during this pandemic. 100%. You don't always have businesses that are open. Yes. Yeah. So how are you going to learn about who they are? And how am I going to pick uh, the best vet? I want to have a vet that I, or you know, a doctor. Or I, I mean, I've done so many different videos where their personality needed to come through as a way for them to sell themselves. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I just think it's a it's a good time to for you know for me anyway to be in video because social media and everything online is driven so, so much by visual ask you arts. About next, social media. I mean, it, that's that's obviously a major factor just in the world mm-hmm. uh, in general. But now. Uh, and a lot of folks are out there trying to do it on their own, right? They're taking right. their own little personal videos and everything, but you right. can actually help them use social media better than what they could do themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think uh, business owners, uh, it, you're right. Things are changing very fast. Mm-hmm. Tools for amateurs are getting better all the time. Sure. So mm-hmm. a good iPhone can make a great video. Sure. And it's all in the concept and the creative You know, I mean, if you have a story to tell, you know, some of the stupidest videos in the world have gotten millions of views. I mean, look at some of the TikTok videos that are (laughs) out there. It's like freaking crazy. Mm -hmm. But um, what you call stupid or or hair metal or whatever. (laughs) It just it just just, ages you. You have to allow it. Hey, whatever they're doing, they're doing (laughs) and it's selling. Right. It's selling for some reason. It's if people are finding it and if they're, you know, like I've got a music video that I did uh, almost three years ago. In fact, I'm going to see the guitarist play tonight. I'm so excited. The first time I've seen live music in a year. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hank Easton. He's a great guitarist. And he also is the leader of a band called the Steely Damned. Mm-hmm. Okay. There is Steely Dan cover, cover band. Okay. And he asked me uh, about three years ago, a friend and I went to go see him. And he said, hey, I need some music videos. Mm-hmm. I, I'd never done a music video. Okay. But my buddy... He was pimping me saying, oh, this is the guy you want. He is so awesome. And Did so, he get his cut? Uh, he got a bunch of music videos. And one of them has got like uh, 65,000 views. It gets, you know, probably about four or 500 views a week. So mm-hmm. it's it's fun to see stuff take off like that sure. online. Sure. Social media or just viral videos. Mm-hmm. Um, and... You know, you just have to connect with people. Some of the stuff I do is is very, very targeted, like a, a veterinarian who wants to do a video blog about dog food, you know, gets like two, two or 3,000 views because people are searching in, mm-hmm. you know, is this dog food good? And they'll use a brand name and all of a sudden search will bring that video up. Mm-hmm. So to to what you're saying, social media is is critical, but it's also 
you know, technology is being democratized to make it uh, even more accessible for people to do it themselves without a guy like me. Okay. Sure. I'm not trying to convince anybody not to use me, but really, you know, you want to use a professional when you need certain things done that you can't do yourself. Yes. The good thing with some social media is for the simple stuff, you can probably do it yourself and do a pretty decent job. Mm -hmm. Just know that there's a point where, okay, I need somebody to come in and help me with the story on this. I need a couple different camera angles. Yes. I need some testimonials. I'm not comfortable in front of a camera. So how do I do mm -hmm. this? Well, that, I mean, that's one of the things that I feel is, is uh, a strong suit for me is again, the relationship, getting somebody to relax in front of a camera is not always easy. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I've worked with other videographers that are not, they're not people handlers, uh -huh. you know, they're just like hit the record button and you better look good. You know, <laughs> if, if you're a model, oh, well it's my, maybe not that important to perform because you don't have to like say words it's all still images but still you see some of the best photographers and they're working with the talent getting them to feel yeah, good so that them. that comes through in that mm -hmm. photograph or video or whatever yeah so um yeah i think I, businesses and and you know everybody should be doing video right now mm -hmm. <laughs> whether they do it themselves or not okay i love what you're saying about um, making them feel comfortable in front of the camera i think that the other piece that you mentioned was uh, telling the story um and i i think that a lot of folks think that they have an idea right uh, on to get on social media and i'm going to tell my story and and people are going to love it and it's going to go viral but they don't ex actually necessarily have a plan right, right. it's just a single video right mm -hmm. it, it's just this one off I, I spilled it all here and hope everybody likes it I hope somebody sees it and then they're not they're not catching right. any eyes um whereas someone like you and correct me if i'm wrong can help them tell the whole story where they can lay it out over a few different videos and, and kind of um really expand on something and and make people want to tune back in because mm -hmm. that's what you really want if you're any type of a business is that you want people to keep coming back for more that's right that's right well said and it, that is where uh you know blatant plug that is where my background in in marketing and advertising does help right because not only do i know the technical part of creating a video but I also know what needs to go into that story to cut through and connect with the audience mm -hmm. because I know about competitive differentiation, augment, right. uh, audience segmentation, targeting, demographics. I mean, I've had a lot of exposure with that through the years. And so, you know, it is more than just turning on a camera and smiling. <laughs> you know, hey, we're the white glove guys. Yeah. You know, yeah. They, they've got a concept and people think it's funny. And so all they really have to do is have personality and people remember the name. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. not really selling anything. Yeah. All they're trying to do is get you to remember the name. Yeah. Right. But then there's other people where it's all about the price, you know, and they're always talking about the price. So, so you, you got to get away from that commoditization. You want to have a genuine story when yeah. you're a brand like a company, you, you want to have a, a, a resonating story so that that target audience is very loyal to you. Otherwise, yes. you know, they're just going to go to the next person who's cheaper. Mm -hmm. You know how it is? I mean, you're in the insurance. Oh, business. I'm just a smile, Chris. I've, I've, no, I mean, <laughs> I'm a one-off Your one -off relationship guy. <laughs> with people keeps them from shopping around. Of course. Mm -hmm. You of course. know, that's, that's critical for all business. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so now looking at the effect of COVID on it, it's forced our world to go far more virtual than anyone, not anyone, but that many were prepared for, mm -hmm. you know, it was do it now or we're not doing anything right. as far as events and even a virtual office space. And so I'm just wondering for Ryan Productions, Ryan Video Productions, um, were you prepared for that? I mean, I'm sure there was just an onslaught of we need this. We need Zoom set up. We don't know how it works. Our employees need instructional videos. Mm. It was probably just a constant, constant need. That's a good question. And was yeah. the need supplied? <laughs> yeah, it is a good question. I, I didn't know uh, at first, you know, I was I was very concerned about what COVID would do mm -hmm. because I knew businesses were closing. And I knew that uh, a lot of times marketing is the first thing that people cut back in their budgets. Mm -hmm. So... It did slow down for uh, about a month or two, but then all of a sudden there were lots of new opportunities. Sure. One example would be 
Um, the Friends of Daly Ranch, it's a huge, beautiful nature preserve in Escondido. Mm-hmm. And every year, seventh graders uh, from an Escondido unit, United School District go up there for um, field trips. Mm. Well, COVID, they can't go up there. Right. So they wrote a grant and they wanted to have a videography uh, series done. So just like a series of documentaries of different things, whether it's plants or the effect of fires on habitats or birds or whatever. We just created a 21 video series of training videos that are going to be a uh, spring semester curriculum for kids who can't go on those field trips. Okay. So it's virtual. Mm-hmm. Great opportunity for video, right? Another is Zoom. With the beauty of Zoom, I can interview somebody. This actually happened. I interviewed a guy that owns a roofing company in New England. Mm-hmm. And I mm. asked him a series of questions about his business. And then I interviewed a woman who lives in Boston who was his uh, consultant for Salesforce. They were like business, it was a testimonial, but the, the woman in Boston was with uh, a, a business that does Salesforce integration. So bottom line is one person's telling me, here's what we did for this guy. He had this problem and we solved it for him and he was really happy. Then I talked to the guy and he's like, oh man, I couldn't have done it without them. So, you know, these I'm just, you know, short, short form, but I created a video without even having to travel. It was all done over zoom, very professional as you know, good quality as zoom could provide. But that is another advantage of COVID is that I, I can create videos without having to be there. Right. So it sort of widened your prospects. You can take clients from anywhere really. Right. (laughs) I actually bought the uh, domain, uh, the zoom editor.com thinking that that would be another pivot. It, it ended up being not such a thing. Really? <laughs> yeah. Because if people were doing zoom. They didn't want, want their zoom stuff edited. You know, people okay. just got used to, okay, unmute yourself and uh, <laughs> you turn off your video. Cause your, your signal's unstable. Yeah. People have just Who's gotten that in so the used to that. Are we recording? Yeah. Yeah. Let me see your cat again. Yeah, you're a cat. <laughs> but, I mean, we, we do some zoom editing, uh, okay. but, but being the zoom editor.com, uh, wasn't enough of a business. You probably model. have it for a year. It might pick up again. Yeah, it's, uh, it's still go daddy. You know, it's still my domain, but it, it actually, I'm doing just a ton of outdoor video. Everything is really? outside, really? which is a pain in the butt because uh, shooting outside is you can't control audio, you can't control mm-hmm. lighting. But um, I have still done a lot of video in the past year. It's been okay. Okay. You know? In virtual events as well? Uh-huh. Yep. In fact, um, we've got a big summer event coming up, which is going to be a combination, uh, um, a medical bio conference where we'll have doctors live here with an audience live here, depending on who wants to travel in August. That's still iffy. Okay. But then we're also using a virtual platform so that it's being sent in Mm -hmm. real time around the world. Mm -hmm. And then that will be recorded so people can have access to it on demand. So yeah, there's opportunities to kind of rethink how you're going to do conferences and trade shows. Right. Um, one of my clients, I do video trade shows for them and they had 500 doctors from around the world, Antarctica, Romania. I mean, wow. they had all kinds of people tuning in and they were just standing there displaying their stuff. And then they had some doctors talking about technologies that they were using uh, for these particular medical devices. So there's all kinds of opportunities if you're creative. Yeah. And I think hybrid events are here to stay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, especially um, like fundraising organizations are realizing you can get an in-person audience, but you can still raise money from people who n- can't attend. That's right. So you can put your event online, get donations. Um, so I think that's just going to be a new model that everyone's going to be doing in the future. Yeah, in a couple of weeks, a uh, local nonprofit is going to be doing an online fundraiser. I recorded a series of v- interviews with uh, uh, people who had benefited from the nonprofit. So mm-hmm. some emotional stories of, uh, uh, you know, hope and goodwill yeah. and turnarounds. And we're going to do a live auction. And so, uh, and it's all going to be done over Zoom. Right. 
Mm. So you're exactly right. <laughs> yeah. It will change. It's bigger outreach. <laughs> yeah. 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 The importance of the chamber. I mean, let's go back to that for a second. I mean, that again, that's where we met. Um, but now, currently, I mean, you still use the chamber. Or, or, you know, we still see you around the Vista Chamber of Commerce. How uh, do you use the chamber? How has it worked for you? Uh, the chambers have been really important for me to feel like I'm still connected sure. to people. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, it's all very, uh, like, you have to set, if I had to set everything up myself one-on-one -on -one with people, it would take forever. And I'd spend all day on Zoom and I wouldn't get any work done. Mm -hmm. But if you can have a networking event where you have 20 people, or you have um, uh, like a Friday morning chamber mixer breakfast, you know, yeah. and you have 30, 40 people. Yeah. And then you can go into breakout rooms. And so th there's a chance there to, to meet new people. You know, it's not quite the same, and I still miss the in-person stuff. Me too. Because I want to be able to walk over there and say, hey, there's Zeke. I yeah. haven't seen him in yeah. a while. right. Yes. Um, but I can't do that as easily unless you're chatting on Zoom. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. yeah. But it is a lifeline mm -hmm. right now. The chambers are a real lifeline of connection for small businesses mm -hmm. during this lockdown. Let's talk about technology a little bit. Um, in your field, that's the scary thing. And you were even talking with Star Fox earlier, the, the production company mm -hmm. that we use. Um, it's ever changing technology. The, mm -hmm. the cameras, the you know, the, the the new splitter versus the the next splitter, and mm -hmm. and and all of these things. I'm sorry, switcher. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> See, yeah. what, what do I know, right? Yeah. Again, I'm just a smile. <laughs> so, um, but but how do you keep up with that? I mean, because you know, you want to be able to tell your next customer. Yes, I have the uh, you know the cutting edge stuff. I, I I'm going to make yours look better than anybody else could. Uh, obviously, you've got the expertise, so maybe you sell that as opposed to just the technology. But don't isn't that a little bit of an issue or a little a little pain for you? There? That is uh, that is a challenge. Uh, I, I've I've kind of grown as my as my clients have needed something. I've worked to be able to say yes. So I haven't necessarily bought into technology before I really needed it. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like, hey, we want to do this live TV show kind of like The View where we are able to switch to different cameras. And can you do that for us? Mm -hmm. And so with a little bit of research, I said yes. Okay. And uh, thank God, you know, technology, that is one thing about the advancement of technology is it's becoming more affordable for people. Mm -hmm. So what used to cost tens of thousands of dollars to have a TV, you know, studio with switching capabilities, I've got a Pelican case that I can put in the back of my car with a couple of cameras and I'm down there and in one hour I can be set up and doing a kind of a virtual TV show with them. Mm -hmm. over zoom or youtube live or whatever so um it's not super expensive cameras are getting crazy affordable great you know iphone 12 has got a fantastic camera mm. okay but the cameras they have in the studio here are great good um so <laughs> yeah i mean it, that is the good thing is creativity is becoming easier to afford for people who want to get into it does that make it a competitive field yeah but competition makes you better yeah. Okay. Well, you know. Okay. So, how about this? Let, let, let's ask you to to teach our uh, our entrepreneurs a lesson. Uh -huh. um, when we talk about the competition, right? Mm -hmm. um, there is something in in. Of course, I deal with this in the insurance industry. We deal with this in in all fields, most fields, mm -hmm. um, or you know, construction workers that I work with, um, that I insure, who are just submitting bids, mm -hmm. right? Um, how do you differentiate yourself or get a successful bid because I, I imagine you get in that position sometimes where they're not just talking to you and then waiting to hear yours and then going to somebody else. They may be going to numerous people at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so now you've got these young entrepreneurs who are saying, I want to get into business and I got to get, but I have to get that first deal that comes across my plate or I'm going to run out of money. <laughs> you know, yep. um, how do you go out there and uh, differentiate yourself from the uh, from the competition. Well, it, there's a process to that. Um, in the very beginning, I was taking a lot of smaller jobs just so that I could get in and do it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was I was competing on price, but what I was creating 
would allow me to compete on value eventually. So I had to have mm. a, a built up portfolio because my background is, is what it is. So I do have a differentiator there. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of videographers have a long career in media and advertising and marketing. Um, so that helps differentiate, but then, you know, I had to build up enough quality to where uh, ideally what you want is somebody to go to your website and say, you know what? I like this guy. I don't need to shop around anymore because That's I right. see his work yeah. and I see what he or she is about. I don't mean to be saying he all the time. I'm looking at Zeke, okay. <laughs> but you know, if, if people can tell just from the brand that you create on your website, on YouTube, on social media, if people get a sense for you that's real and that you're authentic and they feel like that's the guy I feel like I can trust with my insurance, with yeah. my videos, with selling me a used car. I mean, who, who likes buying used cars? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't, but I would go to a guy and stay with that guy because hmm. I trust him and he's not going to rip me off. So more and more if for younger kids, I would say, you know, build up a quality portfolio so that you can become as magnetic and sticky as possible. Magnetic meaning people are drawn to you through your personality and through your work, but then sticky in terms of loyalty and people aren't going to shop around because I, I'll pay a couple bucks more, but I mm -hmm. like his work. That's right. There's it's not worth it to me to keep shopping. Yeah. You know, there's a business plan for you. Magnetic and sticky. <laughs> you got to be drawn to it and then you got to stay with it. That's I like right. it. I like it. Yeah. That might be the name of the episode. Uh -oh. <laughs> Flypaper Productions. <laughs> get, that, get that domain name quick. <laughs> now, why did you pick Flypaper? Well, it attracts flies and then they don't leave. Yeah. I mean, that's what you want. Love it. Let's go to the book corner. Yes, my book corner. Um, so I'm an avid reader and she I'm always is. asking for recommendations because I'll read pretty much anything. Um, and so I'm just curious if you have um, any, it doesn't have to be books, media in general, but um, books if you have them. Any, anything that's been inspirational on your path, um, something that's stuck in your mind that you relate back to of that's something that I've, you know, has influenced me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. I love the word <laughs> path because mm -hmm. uh, I see life that way. Okay. I really do. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> so... So that takes me back to books that were kind of like fundamental on changes in the path mm -hmm. where you were like, okay, I just learned something. I'm going in a different direction now. Sure. Um, I mean, the first book that just blew me away was Lord of the Rings. Oh, I and that's that. <laughs> an epic path. Yeah. You know, the journey of, of Frodo and his, his right. pilgrims. But um, I really liked Herman Hesse's writings and uh, he's a German writer, but you know, when I was younger, that was philosophical. Uh, he, he was probably more into the Eastern religions. And I was at a point where I was really questioning religion. I grew up in a Southern Baptist church. And then okay. I saw a lot of things that caused me to just shut down mm. uh, a lot of, um, oh, you know, just um, what, what, what's the word inconsistencies when people just are not authentic i yeah. saw some real things that uh, to yeah, totally the turned me discrepancies off to the church yeah. and so my world opened up and you know plus i was starting to do some drugs and you know it's just like i was doing things that were not biblically correct okay and i was feeling okay with it i wasn't hurting anybody it was all mm -hmm. you know so the path herman hesse just helped draw me down that path okay. um the, those I mean, I, but I just, I love all kinds of media. And I, I tell you what, there's one, I thought you were going to ask me the mentor question. I, I kind of studied up on that. I thought if there's somebody that, that was like either an author or a musician, I've always been very um, inspired by the music of Todd Rundgren. A lot of people just think of him as the bang on the drum all day guy. Okay. But his music and his career he was very much the individualist. He would be writing and producing and performing and engineering the whole record, you know, back when he was like 19 mm -hmm. and he had a smash double album, you know, and then he got into Eastern religion. He got into progressive rock. He, but at all the time, his lyrical quality was very inspirational for me. 
And I'm still a huge fan. Okay. Wow. You know, and he's still performing. So, uh, you know, I'm still, I'm, I'm one of the ones, you know, when I was a DJ, I tried to play his music a lot because he got paid for every record that got spun. Oh, that's great. Bun. Yeah, he owned his bun. Oh, but, nice. you know, I, I travel. I, I went to camp. Uh, in Vermont with about 200 other fans and we hung out with him for a week. Wow. And we put together a production of The Sound of Music and oh, cool. there was a bunch of campers singing on stage and I was dressed up as a nun <laughs> and he was producing us and it's like, that was a thrill of a life. That's very cool. Because he is, you know, if, if, if you do any research on him, you'll realize how much influence he's had on musicians throughout, you know, the last 40, 50 years. That's beautiful. It sounds like more than just musicians. I mean, it sounds like you carry that inspiration on with you to this day. Yeah, music is integrated into who I am. Well, that, mm. Me, me as well. I mean, I, I, love that. I don't know what I would do without music. Yeah. If I went deaf, I think it would be similar to the end of life, mm. <laughs> because it's like there's music, you know, inside of me, and I just I get so inspired by it. That's that I, I completely understand. My everything I do is rhythmic. Mm -hmm. The walk, the talk, the, the every I drive <laughs> rhythmically. It, you know, whether it was music playing or not, everything mm -hmm. is rhythmic. You know, yeah, I, I love it. I, I I appreciate that. That's that's very cool. Yeah. How about the dollar store. Dollar store. Yes, this is one of my favorite um, <laughs> new bits. Um, my question is, what's something that you've purchased for your professional life that was less than a hundred dollars, and you found it to be extraordinarily useful that you didn't believe it would be that useful because it was so cheap but you use it all the time <laughs> wow um gosh i mean there's so many tools with what i do so there's a lot of things that are functionally necessary like memory cards and stuff like that mm -hmm. um gosh you know I, I'd have to give that some thought. I will tell you this. This year, I've had to learn a lot about bouncing light or shading light, okay. you know, shooting outdoors. Okay. And so, uh, you know, those little floppy things that you put in your windshield when you park your car yeah. to reflect yeah. the sun? Uh -huh. yeah. Well, those can be very useful when you're sitting at, shooting outside. I've seen people in sets holding those up. For exactly. Okay. And okay. those are cheap. Uh -huh. But they are invaluable for shooting outside wow. because okay. you can hold it up over somebody and create shade if you need to, sure. or you can reflect light into their face to right. overcome uh, shade. So, yeah, I guess that would be my answer. Yeah, the idea of Dollar Store is, you know, it's someone who's just getting started and doesn't have a lot of money and just mm -hmm. needs that one thing that's going to change everything. So. Yeah. <laughs> At least make their make their production look more expensive than it actually <laughs> yeah. is, right? Yeah, but it's affordable. <laughs> and that's how, that sounds like a good one right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and another one would be uh, just a, a cheap makeup kit, you know, because okay. you see a lot of videos where people are kind of shiny and they're kind of sweaty mm -hmm. and that maybe they don't look their best. Mm -hmm. So I would always... Yeah, you're looking I'm, at me, Chris, when you're saying <laughs> oh, no, You're beautiful. <laughs> you're beautiful. But in fact, I love your skin tone. Oh, uh, thank you, man. that is... It shows up so well on on video. Okay, it's, with the right person shooting it, of course. Mm -hmm. But anybody <laughs> can benefit from having uh, a makeup artist. So anytime we do sure. a higher budget video, I always try to bring in a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. But you know, I always have a little kit of stuff yeah. in my car, mm -hmm. even if it's just powder or a little bit of color, right? Yeah. Just to make somebody look a little bit better on camera. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're always happy because you know they <laughs> yeah. they look at themselves super critically. Sure. And if you make them look good and sound good. Okay. There's nothing like it. Excellent. Whereas, you know, it's funny though. That takes it back. Takes me back real quick. Not to cut you off, but um, to to radio because you say how people look at themselves right on video, yeah. and I just got to throw it in there. How many people <laughs> hate to hear themselves yeah. after oh, yeah. recorded? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Always. That yeah. was me you, at first. you 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 know exactly what uh, I mean, right? Yep. Uh, yep. I know. People sometimes don't want to watch it. They don't want to listen to it, but yet they do. Sure. Know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Um, I, I, the key to that is just getting used to it. Right. Yeah. How about teaching your younger? I'm sorry, we're, we're ending off real deep, obviously, right. but let's Good. teach your younger self a lesson. Teach my younger self a yes, lesson? Yes, sir. Trust. Just trust in the process. Mm -hmm. If I could go back and talk to myself when I was a kid, it's like, don't worry so much. Mm -hmm. Life is going to happen. It is it is a wheel that doesn't stop. Just enjoy where you are <clears throat> and follow your heart and uh, put all of your heart into what you're doing. And uh Keep your eyes open because the universe opens up doors all the time. That's right. You just have to, you know, be aware of what's going on around you. Don't be so 
inflexible that you feel like I have to do this because my dad, you know, paid for law school, yeah, yeah. whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, follow your heart and do something that makes you feel good at the end of the day. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's great. That's great. You know, and, and there's so much advice uh, that was not just woven into this episode, but is woven, woven into this podcast. And uh, we love hearing it and we love getting it from, you know, people like yourself who really have, you know, figured something out and can at least pass something on. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to give, you know, these lessons to the listener. And I'm, I picked up on a couple of them. And, and one of them, my favorite one that I just picked up on was uh, you may start by competing on price. But build your portfolio because your goal should be to compete on value. Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, You're talking to a man, Chris Ryan, here that has used his past experiences in marketing to thrive in his current business. Everything you go through is an experience. Experience is education. And I hope all the listeners learn something today. I don't know what the our show means to you, Chris, but uh, this is what it's all about for mm-hmm. us. I love it. Same love business, it. different day. Uh, Alyssa, you want to give us some contact info? Love to. All right. So Chris Ryan has Ryan Video Productions. The best place to check it out is his website, ryanvideoproductions.com. But on social media, you can also look Facebook at Ryan Video Pro and Instagram at Ryan Video Productions. Love it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for being here, fun. Chris. You yeah. guys are good. It was a great time, man. I wish you the best of luck with this. this Thanks, great so much, <laughs> Thanks so much, man. Thanks so much. Let's take a you. picture. All right. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the Same Business, Different Day podcast. Special thanks to Star Fox Media for video production and James Russell on music production. Please like and subscribe to the Same Business, Different Day podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts.